Let's switch it on. I think you'd know by now, wouldn't you, really? Um, okay, so welcome to this evening's annual council meeting. Nice to see so many people here. I'm sure you'll be able to keep up this uh, interest for the rest of the year. Um, I, my name is Adrian Gregson. I'm the Mayor of Worcester at the moment. This is a public meeting and members of the public and press are permitted to report on the proceedings. Proceeding, reporting includes filming, photographing, making an audio recording and providing commentary on proceedings. Please note this meeting is recorded and streamed live. These recordings are published on the relevant meeting page of the Council's website. By choosing to attend this public meeting, you are deemed to have given your consent to being filmed or recorded and for any footage to be broadcast or published. If the alarm sounds, the premises must be evacuated immediately. Do not spend time collecting personal belongings. All emergency skate routes are clearly signed. Once you've left the building, the assembly point is in the high street opposite the Guild Hall. Members and other speakers are remind to use, reminded to use the microfilms? microphones when speaking. Uh, and also, I would just uh, remind particularly new members, that the microphones work best for our listeners uh, if you're sitting down, but that is entirely a personal choice. We um, had the sad news of uh, the death of one of our councillors um, recently, uh, Councillor Simon Cronin, and we're just going to spend a few minutes um, paying tribute to him. Um, it's very rare for a sitting councillor to to die in service uh, and um, so uh, we, we 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 feel that it's uh, it's very important and significant obviously to mark that from a personal perspective i've known simon for many many years um be long before he was on the council probably shortly after he finished um working for the metal box um and uh knew him from a variety of places some of them um some of them curry houses some of them pubs uh but also uh for his work and engagement with the uh with the racial equality council back in the day uh and uh, also from uh through a number of friends and he was a well-known character in the city uh as as many of you know um was very uh, very uh, associated with the farrier's arms just around the corner uh, uh, later the plough not this one but the one out in Broadheath by the Elgar birthplace um, and uh, he was also very involved with the uh, King's School alumni organization uh, and was born and bred uh, here um, I've got a, a few people who, who've asked that they have the opportunity to speak. And so I'd like to start with Councillor Lynn Denham. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, it's very sad that Councillor Cronin is not with us tonight. He hadn't been well, but he was out campaigning, albeit with complaining about aches and pains. We were absolutely shocked by the rapid course of his illness. Thank you goes to the NHS and thank you to St Richard's Hospice for looking after him and doing such a good job. He's been part of this council for the entirety of my political life. Um, and we on the Labour group have absolutely been overwhelmed by the tributes to him from so many directions. Um, as has been said, he was a Worcester man who always had time to chat and to share a coffee and to share a story. Um, and the, the common theme from all the contacts that, that have, have come our way, that he was a kind, gentle and generous man who had a positive impact on the people around him, which is a, a pretty good legacy. He was pleased by the overwhelming mandate that he just received from the residents of Nunnery Ward and he hung on in order to sign the papers and he died as he wanted as councillor Cronin for Nunnery Ward. So may he rest in peace.
Uh, Mr Mayor, thank you. Um, it was with great sadness that I learned of the passing away of Simon and uh, my colleagues and I extend our condolences to his family and friends. In the last week or so, I have spoken with several councillors on all sides of the chamber and council officers who have all remarked on the many positive aspects of Simon, the man who would unfailingly remember names, who would always stop for a chat, who would never allow differences of view to compromise his basic decency. He was a man blessed with a quiet, unassuming character who was genuinely, genuinely liked by an enormous number of people. This council will be diminished by his not being among, among us and his memory will continue, particularly among those people who he helped and sought no overt credit for so doing. Councillor Alcott. Mr Mayor, thank you. Um, yeah, it's, Simon was just such a nice, warm, friendly, personable person and he would always sit close to us at, at council and we, we're just very lucky to have worked with him. And obviously, whilst not, not in my ward at all, I've spoken to a lot of people who knew him, a lot of residents. Um, and I think we were just very lucky to have him as a councillor, a real decent, moral person, always friendly and always approachable. Um, yeah, and he would be sadly missed and thought so with his family and friends. Thank you. And uh, co-ward councillor, Councillor Agar. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I met Simon about 25 years ago and uh, we were, we'd been campaigning a lot longer than, than he was a city councillor. He became a city councillor in 2007. And he was very, very proud to be a Worcester City Councillor and the councillor for nunnery. As you've heard, he was a local man and very much a local man through and through. He was a King School boy and all, he, all of his brothers went to Kings along with him and his sisters to the Royal Grammar School. We've heard that he worked in curry houses and, and pubs and was a publican himself for a while. But he'd also worked at Metal Box and later in his mother's curio shop. And I think that's where he got his uh, enthusiasm for collecting. He collected porcelain, Royal Worcester, of course, paintings, stamps, uh, notes and coins. And uh, one of his ancestors had actually, I don't know if it was painted or made the whole thing of the Chicago vase that's in the Royal Worcester Museum. He's very proud of that. His mother was a Cadbury, a member of the Cadbury family. His father was a surgeon. Uh, given that Simon was a publican, it'll come as no surprise, he was very much a real ale lover, but he also liked a glass of wine or two, or possibly three. And he was a convivial man with a gift for friendship. And I've had messages from his friends and acquaintances from around the UK and abroad who are bereft to think that he will no longer be with us. He was a great traveller. He went to Pakistan and Bangladesh a number of times. He went to India, the Eastern Mediterranean and Egypt, which was his main love, uh, which is why he really wore the little hat you so often saw him in. As far as politics go, he, he had been chair of licensing for a time and was quite an enthusiast for licensing matters and used to go down to London regularly to the patrol committee uh, to deepen his knowledge and network there. As we've heard also, he had a strong track record of anti-racist work. And I used to come across him regularly while he was doing that. When I was at doing my community work uh, for some years with the YWCA. I think the thing I will always remember about Simon is his gift for friendship and his kind heart. And that will stay with me. And I hope it will stay with you too. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Um, Councillor Lawrence. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Um, one of the best things about being a member of this council has been meeting Simon. Uh, in 11 years of knowing him, he was always a friendly face. Uh, usually, whenever I stood awkwardly in the corner of the mayor's parlour after a long full council meeting, Simon would be the one to start a conversation with me. Uh, he was liked and respected by councillors from all parties, council staff and many Worcester residents. I often saw him in the city centre chatting with someone and I thought it must have taken him ages to walk up the high street because everyone seemed to know who he was. Simon clearly loved Worcester 
and this was shown through his knowledgeable and determined contributions at meetings. The city and the council won't be the same without him. It will take a long time to get used to him not being here. And I just want to finish by saying thank you, Simon, for everything you've done for Worcester. Thank you. I saw Councillor Amos in the game. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Simon was a great friend of mine and a loyal friend of mine and a man of principle. Loyalty and principle, quality is all too rare in politics today, especially together in one person. He was his own man and was rightly admired for his individuality, and I always encouraged him to wear his hat. I will miss him. Indeed, I think everybody who knew him will miss him. He will be remembered with great fondness, and that is a wonderful legacy for anybody to have. Thank you, colleagues. Um, those who can stand, uh, I suggest we hold a minute's silence. Thank you, Councillor. Um, right. We're going to um, move on now and um, have a few words from the city orator Ian Cragen um, through the advantages of technology, because um, I'm afraid he's away at the moment. Thank you, Ian. <laughs> oh, when's he due back? <laughs> <It's not. laughs> Thank you. Um, I ask if there are any apologies for absence. None received, Mr Mayor. OK, thank you. Then we will move on to the election of Mayor, which is the first item of business for today's uh, meeting, the municipal year. Uh, can I have nominations for um, Mayor? Councillor Vitrovsky. 
Thank you, Mr. May. I would like to nominate Councillor Louis Stephen, please. And is there a seconder to that? Thank you. Are there any other nominations? In that case, Councillor Petrosky, do you have anything to say? Yes, I'd like to say a few words. Thank you. Um, first of all, warm welcome to all the new colleagues who are joining us in this chamber. I hope you find your, your new roles um, satisfying and, and fulfilling. Uh, also, a word of thanks to the outgoing Mayor, Councillor Adrian Gregson. Um, I know how um, closely um, Louis was watching you and your style, and, and, and I think um, I wouldn't betray his, his sort of uh, confidence by saying that he would like to emulate your style of um, incl inclusion. Uh, friendliness and, and attention uh, that you paid to so many aspects of the local community in Worcester. So a few words about Louis. Um, Louis has been part of Worcester since his early years. Uh, having gone to school here uh, in the city, he, he ended up married, uh, marrying a local girl. He spent a few years uh, out of Worcester studying for his degree in engineering at the Loughborough University. And then his first job took him to North, North Wales. But it wasn't long before he was drawn back to Worcester. Louis has been very politically active all his life, fighting for social justice, um, including his time at the university. Passion for public service seems to be running in his um, DNA, a part of his DNA. Once back in Worcester, he worked for Worcester uh, Bosch, uh, being an ambassador um, across the country and also abroad for, for this fine company of, um, the, 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 that we are privileged to, uh, to have here in Worcester. Uh, he rose to the senior management role, that, role there and for those of us who have a, the good fortune of knowing Louis a little, little bit better, uh, his passion for innovation and uh, looking for all kinds of continuous improvement have translated from the world of engineering into public and uh, life and, 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 and politics. The man gets very seriously excited about a good spreadsheet, uh, a fine bar chart, or a decent graph. But he's also very practical with this all. Uh, and I think many of uh, his former Bosch colleagues still talk about um, his suggestion to be able to fit six boilers on a pallet. Louis and Katie settled back in Worcester, where their family live, uh, drawn by its richness of history, culture, scene, and tight-knit, diverse community. Uh, both of their children um, have been born in, in this city and went to school here. Both in his private life and his politics, um, and I'm, I'm sure many colleagues across um, all around the chamber will agree with me that um, the man is known as a bridge builder. Um, one, one example which I would like to mention is that uh, you, many of you know that uh, Louis can be spotted on his um, trusty bike um, cycling across, across Worcester. Um, he had a rather unfortunate fall uh, not that long ago. And I think the testament to, to, his, uh, to his character uh, is can be testified by the fact that so many people across the different uh, political parties people working for the council people who who know him as a as a councillor uh, wished him well visited him in the hospital uh, and was very very seriously concerned about his well-being and, and and wishing him speedy recovery luckily he is here with us and critically he's also back on his bike um, it's good news for this council that, that, that he is back and, and in full health uh, for this uh, for because uh, Councillor Stephen has done so much to introduce a, a slightly different kind of politics to this chamber and to our city as a whole. It's a more consensual, collaborative, inclusive way of doing politics, which focuses on working, working out issues together through our committee system. As a man of detail, he loves spending time with small charities and city, com city council teams. Uh, as well as different communities and individuals, uh, always listening very, very patient, uh, patiently. He listens well, uh, and, and, um, and he, he, he would be able to understand what Shakespeare meant by saying, give every man thine ear, but few thy voice. Take each man's censure, but reserve thy judgment. Uh, dear colleagues and friends, I would like to propo propose Councillor Louis Stephen uh, as our new mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Bissett. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I am delighted to be able to second the election of Louis Stephen as mayor. <clears throat> he has seven years experience on the council and has displayed leadership and commitment through his long stint as Green Group leader and chair of policy and resources. He is totally committed to collaborative working. He will make an excellent mayor. Thank you. Um, right, we now proceed to the vote. Those in favor of the election of Louis Stevens mayor. Any against? That's unanimous. I remind council the way you vote in this place is by putting your hand in the air so we can see it. Okay, thank you very much. I, Louis Stephen, having been elected to the office of mayor, declare that I take the office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfill the duties of it according to the best of my judgment and ability. Thank you. It's a great honour to be elected as Mayor of Worcester. It's a position that dates back not decades but centuries. Thank you to everyone who's voted for me and supported me. It's not lost on me that I will be the first Green Mayor of Worcester. And I think one of the things that I think is fantastic is that together, and I'm looking at everyone in the room, we have depoliticized the role of mayor. We now take it in turns to allow each of the political groups to have the role of mayor. And I think that is a great way to show that we are prepared to work together. And it's a sign of our maturity and our willingness to do cross-party working when we need to do so. Right, so I think we'll carry on with the rest of the meeting. Do you have your, your ID I to do. change your yeah. name? Yeah. Just have it on the side. Excellent. Great. Right, okay, so the, um, what we're going to do is, is an actual mail letter. Oh, ah, yes. Yeah. Okay, yes. Right. Okay, I'm, my, uh, the mayoress will be uh, my wife, Katie Stephen. I'm going to invite Katie to come forward now for the Badger of Office. Come forward.
Right. So the next item on the agenda is the vote of thanks for the retiring mayor. And I'm going to call upon Councillor Lynn Denham. No. Nope. Oh, sorry, Zoe. Sorry. I call on Zoe to do that a vote of thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Louis. Um, as Adrian's co-councillor in Rainbow Hill Ward, it falls to me to formally thank him for his contribution as mayor over the last year. If we're honest, quite a few members of this chamber were surprised when Adrian put his hat in the ring to be mayor, particularly as he'd expressed no interest in being mayor before. And it's not like he hadn't had the opportunity. Adrian has been councillor for rather a lot of years. I'm not exactly sure how many. However, I do remember that when I joined the council here as a very junior officer at the very start of my career, Adrian was a councillor. So if you look at my age and you think about that, it's been a while. So I can only conclude that Adrian was waiting until he could opt to have the most memorable year as mayor. <laughs> and certainly I think we can say that this last 12 months has been a very, very memorable year. When he took up office, Adrian knew he was, there was going to be a royal event. After all, it was the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. As mayor of our faithful city, Adrian knew he would have a key role in those royal events, the celebrations and the community events. Although I doubt even he expected a thousand people to turn up to see him when he lit the beacon at Fort Royal Park to start that off. Um, I'm sure he, he didn't really anticipate was the raft of other royal events that were going to come to characterize his mayoral year. First, we had the sad death of the Queen, and he had a very important role in leading us through that, both officers as they opened books of condolences, us as councillors as we progressed, as we processed, rather than progressed into the cathedral for a special service, and also the extraordinary meeting we had at the council to pay our respects to Her Majesty. Then, of course, there was the oath of allegiance to the new monarch on the steps of the Guildhall. I was only going to mention the memorable problems with the microphone because I think Ian's already said the one thing that I was being politely not mentioning, but will probably be the most memorable thing for me of, the, of Adrian's mayoral year. October saw more royal events with the visits from Her Royal Highness Princess Anne and the following day Her Royal Highness Princess Alexandra, who I didn't know was 86. Only Adrian could compare princesses to buses. If you missed that, it's all in the mayor's blog. And finally, the coronation. Adrian, I did wonder, did you have a word with someone to say, can you just bring it forward from June into May, just to squeeze it into our year, just so you could have the full lot? So, but there has been more to Adrian's mayoral year than just these royal events. Adrian has represented our city with dignity and intelligence at all different events, including overseas. He was in Belgium to unveil a new memorial to Worcestershire's regiment in the First World War. He's welcomed new staff and said goodbye to, to long-serving members of staff. He's met with local volunteers and community leaders. He even hosted a tea and a tour for those who've come to our city from, from the Ukraine. Adrian has raised funding in all sorts of ways from the traditional mayor's banquet to the 10K run that he did in September, which I know others in the room did as well, rather you than me. Then, of course, there was the very uniquely Adrian way of fundraising, the Ale Trail. Fundraising by visiting 60 pubs across the year, across the city, raising the profile of these, raising the importance of their role in, in social, as, as social um, places for people to meet, and also the economic consequences that pubs suffered as a result of COVID. And I don't know, Adrian, whether you counted how many drinks you had as well as how, how many pubs you visited. Is this an idea that other mayors might want to follow? Louis, any plans for a mayoral pub crawl? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> so... As well as raising much needed money, Adrian's work has also raised the profile of these important charities. Most of us knew Seven Arts as the force behind Light Night and other Arches product, projects. But did we really know about their other agenda, the work they do about widening access to the arts? Through Adrian's mayoral year, we have learned a lot about the valuable role of this group, how engaging arts and cultural activities helps mental and physical well-being. We've also learned about Onside, an advocacy organisation who work in mental health, social prescribing, well-being and support, focusing on empowering people to make their fair, making fair and informed decisions. Everyone is entitled to fair treatment and, need, and often people need help to develop, to navigate that very bureaucratic challenges that so, we are so often face, and that's what Onside do. This has been an extremely challenging year for Worcester and for our country. 
it has seen a, great, a year of great joy and of great sadness. I believe that we've been very lucky to have Adrian as such a towering leader as mayor to guide both the council and the city through all of that. So thank you, Adrian. And I've got... Thank you. I'd like to uh, call uh, uh, Councillor Gregson forward. Claire's taken her phone with her, which is the, um, the thing which keeps time on how long you speak for. So I can't see it. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for those kind words, Zoe. Uh, and um, congratulations, Louis, on your election. I hope you enjoy it as much as I have. I was um, showing a troop of rainbows around, um, not more than 90 minutes ago around the building and um, one of them said would you do it again uh, but how can you reproduce um, what we've had this year I mean every event that you do of course is unique um, but uh, if you look at the year we have had um, a jubilee uh, we enacted London Bridge finally on the death of the Queen we issued the proclamation for the new king, however badly. Um, we've got through three prime ministers. We've, um, we've commemorated the anniversary of a war on the European landmass um, and dedicated a new memorial to the Worcestershire Regiment and had a coronation. And you would uh, not want to try and copy that. It has been somewhat momentous. I think I'm the 137th mayor since Alexander Sheriff um, presented the city with the chain um, and uh, not counting the odd visitor to the, the parlour, of course, of, we might have worn it now and then. And it felt appropriate that one of my first duties was actually to dig the first sod at Sheriff Gate on Sheriff Street, named after that, that man, of course, in 1864. Um, I must say I've done a few, I've dug a few sods since then um, but not just for buildings but for trees I've launched opened or cut ribbons at over 50 events the last most fittingly perhaps this morning for the dementia fair which is a, a cause close to my and my family's heart uh, for well-known reasons this has ranged from schools to footpaths to foot clinics to shops businesses exhibitions cars parades, festivals, gatherings, and a set of garden gates. Uh, Jill opens my envelope, but I'm sure that if I asked politely, I would have been able to do that as well. My theme for the year has been how we can use our love for art, culture, and heritage in the city to enhance, support, and improve our mental and physical health and well-being. And I hope that the two charities of Onside and Seven Arts have benefited from the money raised, um, and the Just Giving site is still open, by the way, uh, and also the publicity and the opportunity for them to get involved and, and be active across the city and network across a wider range of communities. I must thank all of those who generously have given their time and their money to support the mayor's charities through raffles, auctions, events, sponsorships, gifts and donations, items given for uh, those raffles and auctions, and of course, all the individuals who pledged money um, through the Just Giving site to support two major campaigns, um, both runs. Firstly, the actual run, um, and secondly, uh, the pub trail. Um, I have to say that both were hugely enjoyable, and both um, were about working with a team, and both were carried out at roughly the same speed. 
I've been asked about my highlights uh, of the year and certainly the 10K experience and the ale trailer up there. I'm the first and possibly, possibly the last uh, mayor to do both in one year. There are others, of course. However, um, having Worcester former players lunch uh, at the rugby club, sing my 60th happy birthday with a glass of 63 port in my hand was quite exceptional. Food and drink, as you'll have realised, has always been a, a major part in, in both my and Rachel's lives. Um, so the Jubilee lunch, the coronation lunch at Barclays Arms Houses only last week, um, being cooked for by a Master Chef winner in Redditch, tasting a range of ciders in Hereford, celebrating 500 years of the clothiers and 100 years of Rotary, and the Chinese New Year all add to those um, great occasions. A fair bit has revolved around my interest in the city's heritage and history, not just in the Guildhall, but also the anniversaries of Gellivel Park, the Blue Plaques, uh, and my personal interest in the First World War involving uh, Remembrance Week uh, and also particularly the visit to, to Belgium that has been mentioned. Um, I was at just another event this morning uh, linked to uh, the Gellivelt um, visit where um, we uh, met the family of a soldier who'd only just been identified through his DNA and was uh, reburied out there in March. Much of the year has been dominated, of course, by royal events. And as mayor, I have been very involved. Um, we were straight into the Jubilee lunch. Uh, we were then soon hit by the Queen's death and all the activity around that. And I want to say now how well our civic, to te civic team, um, Stuart and the Mace Bearers, performed and led by uh, uh, us all during that period worked, worked so well. Um, of course, I had to do the proclamation in the old fashioned way. Um, since then, we've had Princess Anne three times, Princess Alexandra at the Henry Sandon, and the rare opportunity for a serving mayor to go to the Buckingham Palace garden party wearing the chain of office. Um, it was just a shame that the, the man himself couldn't, couldn't make it that day. Music has been a, a big part of the year as well. Uh, my choices at the civic service were well noted. Uh, and so thank you for those who were paying attention. Uh, and uh, it was very good to see my dad able to attend that service back in June. Uh, we've had carols, several of them. We've had uh, Gerontius and Brahms. We've had Deep Purple and Madness. We've had Shrek and appropriately enough Queen. Uh, Zadok and of course a lot of Elgar. Uh, and culminating the, the Threpney Opera performed by the Sixth Form College, which we then brought into the uh, Guildhall full of charity event night. I must say I'm quite a dab hand at the ukulele as well now. Um, I will remember most standing with the Book of Remembrance and watching all the Worcester, in all its shapes and sizes, file into the Guildhall to pay their respects to the Queen. I think I'll remember the visit by over 100 people last summer of Ukrainian guests and their hosts and lament the reason for why they are still here, no matter how welcome we try and make them. I will remember laying a wreath at the Menning Gate as a culmination of a lot of different aspects of my life. And I will remember my orator Ian, dancing between the legs of stilt walkers celebrating the Commonwealth baton. He may have forgotten that one. Canalettos, the young enterprise, canoes, taking the sword in a golf bag to All Saints Church to match it up with the sword rest there, and reading the line, the witch in the wardrobe from the cathedral pulpit, all have their place. But mostly, it's the people of Worcester that are important. A vast array of parents, grandparents, friends, community groups, helpers, carers, volunteers, who give of their time in a grey network that absolutely keeps the city and its residents going. They're the ones we should remember. They are the ones we should thank. And it's been a privilege for the last 12 months to serve them. Thank you. God save the Queen. Um, I'm finished. 
Uh, finally, I just wanted to give some direct thanks. Um, uh, firstly, um, to my consorts this year, uh, John, um, Joy, who, and Sasha, who've been really helpful and have stepped in when Rachel has uh, been unable to do so. Rob, of course, and Jill Priest, especially for their work, but also all the Guildhall staff who've kept the parlour clean, uh, the civic team and my Labour comrades for supporting me to have a year out. I'll, I've almost forgotten what I've got to do. <laughs> um, all those people will be thanked uh, properly in due course. Um, the only presentation I wish to make now, Mayor, is uh, just a little something for the Mayoress mm -hmm. if she'd like to come forward. Aaron's his badge. Thank you very oh, much. Thank you for all your, your support. Luck, your thank, you. Great. thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, we now come to the Mayor's communications. I'd like to thank the outgoing Mayor and Mayoress, Adrian Gregson and Rachel Hall for all of their support over the last year from myself and Katie as, we, as they showed us the ropes for us during our year as deputies to you. It was very much appreciated and we really felt welcomed by you and I've learned a lot from you. I'd like to welcome all of the newly elected councillors um, it is a great honour to be elected, and I hope you really enjoy being a councillor. Um, so, to name you, um, I'd like to welcome Councillor Hannah Cooper, Councillor Andrew Cross, Councillor Jesse Yeager, Councillor Sarah Murray, Councillor Tor Pingree, Councillor Alina Round, Councillor Atif Sadiq, and Councillor Sue Smith. I hope you really enjoy being a councillor, and I'm sure you will. But I'd also like to welcome back into the council uh, recently re-elected uh, councillors, uh, Councillor Richard Udall and also Marjorie Bissett for another year on the council. Following on from Adrian's lead, um, I think it's a very good idea having a mayor's orator, and I'm going to be continuing on with that tradition now of having another year Mayor's orator. My orator is going to be the current uh, poet laureate for Worcestershire, and that's Rihanna Levi. The mayor's charity this year will be Age UK. Age UK do some amazing work in the community. They are a trusted source of service for very many people. And they're often a lifeline to some older people who are on low incomes or who are lonely. And Age UK often reach people in the community that our normal systems don't quite reach. One of the many services they provide is a free home energy check. They visit residents' homes and help them to identify ways that they can reduce their energy costs. And they support them by doing things like helping them to get their letterboxes fixed or to have low energy bulbs fitted 
or draft excluding. These are just some examples of the practical things they do to help people in our community, to help them with tackling fuel poverty. Throughout this year, I'll be expanding on what Age UK do in our community. And I hope that you will support me in this Mayor's Charity Year to raise money for them. Not only to raise money for them, but also to raise awareness of the great work that they do. And finally, I'm going to just, uh, uh, my mayoral theme for the year is that in keeping with the, my chosen charity, my theme is creating a community that values and includes our older citizens. Right. So where are we now then? We're, um, oh yes, key civic events. Right. So we don't have dates yet for the key civic events, but we do know that we have an inaugural banquet and a civic service, and those dates will be announced in, in due course, uh, not um, certainly by the next uh, full council. I'd like to extend an invitation to everybody after the meetings have concluded to join me with for a drink and some refreshments in the mayor's parlour at the end of the meeting, which is downstairs in the lower assembly room. Okay, so uh, the next um, item then is the election of deputy mayor. Right, so do we have a nomination for deputy mayor? And do we have a seconder? Okay, so um, would you like to speak on, on Mel's behalf? Uh, I would like to propose Councillor Mal Alcott. Would you like to speak and uh, expand on that? Or uh, why should be a good candidate? Yes, thank you, Mel. Um, <laughs> uh, Mal is a friend and fellow cam campaigner. She was born in Worcester. She stood sixth times doggedly determined to, until she was elected in autumn 2019 sadly due to the uh, by-election vacancy of the untimely death of Stuart Daly Maxwell then the strange times of 2020 and 21 I was able to I was we were not able to meet and then we were able to jointly campaign again we were both elected me to city council and Mal to county council and she became group leader of both the city and county uh, groups. Uh, Mal is a dedicated politician. She rearranged her life to serve the residents of Plains, twice changing her job to give her the necessary freedom to campaign and then represent Plains, Worcester and Worcestershire. She is tireless in her support of her fellow councillors, which was rewarded by our group growing with the addition of councillors Sarah Murray and Jesse Jagger this month. Mal, it is a pleasure to call you friend, councillor and group leader, and I now see, see you assuming a much deserved role of deputy mayor of our great city. Thank you. I'm happy to second the nomination of Councillor Alcott. Uh, last year, the constitution was changed to put in place a rainbow rotation for mayor. Um, and this is about giving everyone a chance of equal access to the mayorship, mayorship and fair shares of being the civic head of this council. Every mayor and deputy brings their own talents, interests, personality and enthusiasm to the role. I know that Mel has thought carefully about taking this on and the impact on her family. She will be a conscientious and diligent deputy who can be relied upon to support the mayor and learn the ropes for next year. Are there any? No. So in that case, we'll turn to the vote. All those in favour, please raise your hand. OK, and all those against? Thank you. That vote is carried. Welcome. Welcome. No call. Deputy Mayor, thank you. Okay. 
Mel, would you like to would you like to come forward for the um, the deputy back, mayor's chain? Yeah, I, Mal Alcott, having been elected to the office of Deputy Mayor, declare that I take that office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties of it according to the best of my judgment and abilities. Don't go away. <laughs> Hang on. Congratulations. Thank well you. done. <laughs> Thank you. Right, at this point, we can do the deferring. I can just turn to some of the other items on the business to do declarations. I can do those first. Yeah. Okay. Just those two, and then. Yeah. Okay, so the next item on the agenda is are there any declarations of interest? No, thank you. And the next item on the agenda are the minutes of the, the last meeting. Are we all happy to note those? Please. Noted, thank you. So the next item would normally be the appointment of leaders of the council, but there is uh, a motion that's been put forward. So it makes sense for us to defer these next three items uh, until we've um, investigated and gone through this new motion and we'll do that at the extraordinary meeting in due course we'll continue the rest of the agenda and we will come back to these items uh, during that um, during the extraordinary meeting Thank you. Turning to agenda item 14. so okay so we'll now be turning to agenda item 14 which is the report of the returning officer now, this is a report for noting. I'm sure you've all read the, uh, your minutes of the, uh, the agenda papers. Are we all happy to note the returning officer's report? Thank you, Julia noted. Um, the next item is agenda item 15, and that is the report of councillor's allowances for the last 12 months. Again, this is detailed in your uh, papers. Um, are we all content to note that as well? Okay, thank you. So those are duly noted as well. Um, okay, and then the last item on this part of the meeting is the programme of meetings for the council. Again, those are detailed in your papers, uh, setting out all of the meetings for the council and also the committee meetings. Are you all happy and content to note those as well? Thank you. Right, those are duly noted. So that is the formal end of the normal annual council meeting and we will now turn to the extraordinary meeting uh, where we'll be considering uh, the main agenda item which is the motion put forward. Right, so um, turning to that now, um, before we go through the, are there any apologies for absence? I don't think there are any. No. no? Uh, and are there any declarations of interest that anyone would like to put forward here? No. Next item is public participation, and we do have public participation this evening. Um, I'd like to call forward uh, Francis Lancaster to come to the table and to have five minutes uh, to talk on a subject he's choosing. If you'll forgive me, Mr. Mayor, I would prefer to stand. Okay, you need to use the microphone if you want, otherwise it won't be recorded. Do you want to turn it on? It won't be recorded. Turn it on and then you don't have to use it, but at least it'll be recorded then. Just the right hand button. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Mayor. Any organisation, including this council, 
needs leadership, accountability, commitment, and trust. Of course, the having uh, joint leaders was a political maneuver, and the Labour Party were never going to accept uh, their allocation of that position. It was an attempt by um, the Green Party um, really to put other parties in a difficult political position. Um, I hope that this council will return to the traditional uh, way of having a leader, a deputy leader. Um, it served this council well uh, for many years. But, but of course, this council is in a position of no order of all control. Um, the suggestion of having the um, largest party, uh, which is five seats short of a majority, and with such a diverse representation against, um, across the council, makes that uh, a very difficult uh, proposition. Moreover, without some kind of agreement um, over how to take this council forward over the next year, uh, good luck to the person who takes on that role, but they are likely to be a leader of straw. Um, if you are a leader, you should um, have the responsibility of standing up and defending the program of the council for the next year. Now, of course, uh, that means others taking on the responsibility of signing an agreement. After the 2012 um, elections, the then leader council of Garrity did make such an agreement with the Liberal Democrats. They walked away from that. After the 2016 elections, um, an agreement was made between the Labour Party and the Chameleon Party. Um, they signed an agreement uh, which included a very um, comprehensive range of things for the benefit which they believe for our city, including 20 passive house homes, which seems to have disappeared into a black hole and perhaps therefore is only a political stop. Surprise, surprise, only a few months later, we all learned that there had been secret negotiations between the leader of the Green Party and the politician formerly known as the Great Leader. And that produced <laughs> um, a change in the rules by which this council uh, was run, quite blatantly to dish the Labour Party. And although I am no friend of the Labour Party, I did object um, at the time because I did not believe it was in the interests of our city. I did not believe it was the right thing uh, to do, and indeed it was not the right thing to do. So what is the right thing to do? I believe very strongly that you can be someone with very strong political principles, but also have an independent mind and be committed to the general welfare of our city. I, I always wince when I read on social media people making cynical, snarky comments about the commitment of councillors. Because my experience has always been that regardless of party or none, all the people who I worked with in the three, within, when I was a councillor and since have been members of this council for the right reason to help and to serve. And that therefore, the best way of going forward is for somebody to stand up and be a leader and for other groups to say, yes, we will support either a whole programme or at the very least, a part of a programme. Now, this count, this council and city faces very serious <coughs> issues. Uh, we used to be able to say, oh, how well Worcester has uh, got through difficult economic times. I'm not quite sure that we can say that uh, so strongly now, I'm afraid. Uh, social housing. Some councillors here know that I'm disappointed the way that the council has not moved forward, uh, in my opinion, properly on this issue. Um, what has happened to the tourism strategy, the history of heritage trail, which a number of councillors, sadly, at least one now deceased, supported over the years, which would give a tremendous spirit to our tourism and our economy. We're falling behind Cheltenham and other one minute. Um, surrounding uh, cities, very much to, I'm sure, to my regret. So, um, I hope that parties and individuals will step forward tonight and take on the responsibility and not be concerned with who's up and who's down. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you. Thank you.
Right, okay. Um, the next item is the moving of the um, notice of motion. Um, this is proposed by Councillor Lindenham, seconded by Councillor Jebba Riaz. Uh, I'm going to invite them now to speak in favour of their motion. Councillor Lindenham. Thank you very much. So this year's constitutional amendments um, have um, three key parts to it. It's to reinstate the principle, which was removed last year, that the council should have a leader and a deputy leader, even where there is no overall control, and to remove the principle of joint leaders. And secondly, to ensure that when there is no overall control, the leader of the council is appointed by council from the largest political group. And the third key thing really is um, removal um, of the income management subcommittee with the change in national policy, um, the agenda of that committee is subcommittee is severely undermined so it was a cost saving measure in terms of um, officer time and councillor time um, that that business would be covered by policy and resources instead. Um, some people may say not again when we're looking at constitutional amendments um, but actually it's been done every year in recent times so why not this year in 2023 the election results indicated a profound shift in voter preference worcester people want a change in leadership and in vision They've signed up for a fairer, greener agenda and for a better Worcester for everyone. <laughs> it's worth, I think, reminding ourselves of actually what the definition of leadership is. It's the action of leading a group of people or an organisation. This is about the executive function of Worcester City Council. It's not symbolic nor is it a civic role those are responsibilities of the mayor it's about representing this council outside the guild hall with other agencies other councils the public sector arms of national government potentially developers business representatives anyone with a stake or wanting a stake in our city Many decisions are made within our committee system on the council, but those decisions need to be communicated to others with a consistent voice and a coherent explanation. Last year, we supposedly had a joint leadership of political opponents. I don't think that is viable. Um, to have leaders with completely different views and priorities, particularly if they're supposed to alternate at the same external meeting each month. For the smooth functioning of this council, officers need consistent guidance and communication. We believe, the Labour group, that leadership is important. Good leaders listen to others, Power colleagues gather information and skills for a united team which is equipped to handle difficult decisions and, and inspire people to be their best and to achieve. Some in this chamber don't believe in leadership. It's difficult to negotiate with a collection of independent voices however much one respects those individuals. Joint leadership is not viable if one party is unable to take responsibility or sign up to budgetary accountability. I propose this motion to have a clear leader and deputy leader of this council for the next 12 months. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can I uh, take the opportunity to congratulate you on your election uh, to the seat of mayor? And can I also welcome all the new councillors to the chamber? 
uh, and congratulating on their election victories and looking forward to working with you all. Uh, and it's also to prime, uh, appropriate, Mr. Mayor, to mention all those that we have lost in the election. I think collectively over a year, 100 years of experience um, that we've lost, maybe possibly more. So, um, you know, I always say it's riding high in April and shot down in May. It's just the nature of the business that we're in. Uh, friend or foe, they'll be sorely missed in, in this chamber for, for many years to come. Um, regarding this uh, motion, Mr. Mayor, I, Mr. Mayor, I would formally like to second this motion and co-leadership really works. Like many people, the dream and the uh, reality are completely different in terms of this. There is, there is a real reason why you don't have two CEOs in a company or two head coaches of a sports team or two captains or two prime ministers. A stuffy, and, a stuffy or old world as a hierarchy may be and can feel, they are needed for effective leadership. I mean, just God forbid, if we have two David Blakes, what would that do? Leaders can't perform their role without a strong support from leadership team and their followers. Many times, it may not even be clear to the public who the senior leader is because of the tremendous support that they receive. But when major change is required, a new vision is set, or a critical decision needs to be made, one clear needs to become uh, one leader needs to become apparent and that is when they step up the reasons why so many business partnerships fail if you must work in a co-leadership setting it is paramount that you decide on a decision making protocol at the start of your relationship however without a party whip the lack of discipline with the team there is virtually no chance of an effective reference terms of reference or working arrangement that will last like our speaker here um, uh, mentioned on previous occasions. There may well be arguments here tonight, Mr. Mr. Mayor, that about the committee system negating the need for a leader, and that a leader is a position without power and meaningless title. But that couldn't be further from the truth. And in real, and there is a real understand, misunderstanding here of the role, the role of a leader in a both a political sense and a real world business sense. Talking on the streets amongst our residents, like many of you have, regarding leadership. And a few people have mentioned, in terms of the Green Party themselves, you know, why, if they're proposing a co-leadership model, why aren't the, co uh, the leader and the deputy leader of the Green Party in a co-leadership ar ar arrangement? Why are they proposing something that they're not within their own party? That give, it is food for thought in terms of that. Co-leadership also, Mr. Mayor, has a connotation attached to as a formal agreement or a set of policies or set of agenda that leaders are working on. And that simply isn't the case. We are two different political parties and electorate have voted for two different parties. And I think it does a great deal of disservice to the title and the position of leader of the council that a figurehead of the council, that he or she stand up and be counted when the need is there to take responsibility for their decisions, not to dither and dally and making decisions. The city needs true leadership in this time of need. Therefore, Mr. Mayor, I propose to back the motion. Thank you. So I've got uh, Councillor Stanley first. Uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you, and uh, congratulations on your uh, appointment, and I hope your year is a fulfilling and happy one. Um, I and my group can't support um, this particular motion, uh, and allow me to um, expand on why. Um, firstly, the results that we have all experienced over the course of the, the last sort of uh, 10 days or so give no one single party the right to claim legitimate sole ownership, as it were, of this council. It is in absolutely imperative that in a council that is so, uh, you know, where, where the numbers are so diminished in the sense that there is no uh, outright sort of view on this, that the two single largest parties have the, the mature and responsible approach that says they have to work together. Uh, it is beyond my understanding how we can have a result such as we've got, and then the, the Labour group claim that they have a, a majority to, to claim uh, that the, the, 
the constitution needs changing. I uh, simply ha have my grave reservations about that, and I, for that reason, we will, as, as a group, not support the, the mandate going forward. Uh, and in addition to that, we have grave concerns about the the the, uh, the 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 fact that income generation is not going to proceed because, despite the fact that it would go into policy and resources and be more than adequately covered on one level in there, we are still in a situation where a conversation as imperative to this city as income generation does not have a formal committee structure to work with. That conversation, by definition, will diminish if it is placed within, even within its parent committee. So on those grounds, no, we, we simply can't support it. Thank you. Uh, and now call on Councillor Orcott. Mr Mayor, thank you, and congratulations on your appointment. Thank you. Um, yeah, I would like to speak in favour of the motion. Um, I think people may remember last year, um, I was not in favour of the, the joint leader motion, because I, I saw it last year as a, as a deliberate ploy to um, a lot of people who voted for the Green Party, but they were kind of giving the, the role of joint leader straight to the Conservative Party, because we all knew that the Conservatives and Labour couldn't form a group. Um, so as a group, we stand by those principles this year. And I, th I think leader and deputy leader is something that people understand. When you, you know, when you think about the prime minister and deputy prime minister, it's something that people can work with. And I just think it's a sensible way forward and something with, that will stand us in good stead in the future. Thank you. Thank you. I'm now going to call on Councillor Bissett. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Let me congratulate you also on your, um, your rise to the position of mayor. Um, I, I oppose the motion. It, uh, we Green councillors believe that when the council is in no overall control, with no single party having a majority, the fairest way to select the city council leaders is for the two largest groups to share the role between them, with two joint leaders. The two largest parties are pretty evenly balanced, with the Labour Party currently having 12 and the Green Party having 10. Although Labour has more councillors, the Green Party did win the popular vote at last week's elections, so it seems logical that the parties should share the leadership role. In addition, joint leadership is very much in keeping with the way the Council is run, with all parties sharing decision-making in committees. I do believe that leadership is important, but I think that this can work with a joint leader from Labour and and from the Green Party. We don't need groups, as Councillor Mel Alcott um, suggested, because we have the committee system in this council, not the cabinet, leader and cabinet system. Um, the motion before us covers not only the leadership of the council, but also the disbandment of the income management subcommittee. And um, uh, along with, uh, with James, um, I believe that if there is some disquiet, and there clearly is, about whether enough consideration has been given as to how this function will continue, um, we should, I, I, we're proposing that rather than the committee being disbanded, it is suspended and no appointments made until there has been a review of its functions, which is put, reported back to council after the by-election for Simon Cronin's seat has been held, which will in itself require reconsideration of um, uh, the assignment of chairs and vice chairs. So I have an amendment which I believe um, can, is going to be circulated or has been circulated. Is that correct? Um, this version two. It hasn't been circulated. Yes. Or shall I read that? Okay, so my amendment strikes through uh, paragraphs one and two. The next paragraph reads, the income management subcommittee should be suspended and no appointments made to the subcommittee until there has been a review of its functions, which will be reported back to council after the by-election for Simon Cronin's seat has been held. And then finally, the monitoring officer is instructed to make any consequential amendments to the constitution to give effect to this decision. This decision.
OK, thank you. Um, Councillor Bissett, while, while that's doing the rounds and being delivered and while people are reading it, um, can you just expand a little bit more about the, um, about the purpose of, of the suspension of the committee, subcommittee? Well, I, I, think, I think it's a matter of this decision having been made very quickly with no, with no proper um, discussion. Um, that I, it's not been discussed at a, at a committee, at a full council. Uh, it's just been proposed and, and there's clearly some disquiet and we don't want some people in this, some of the members of this, of this council to be feeling that something has happened that they haven't been able to contribute their opinions on. Okay, uh, do you have a seconder for this uh, amendment? I believe I have a seconder in. Yes. Okay, can we check with the monitoring officer with whether this is actually an amendment or a new motion? I would advise that it's an amendment to the motion. Um, the constitution in the group leaders protocol mandates um, that there should be a review of the group leaders protocol and those arrangements every time there's a change in political balance and this is part of that discourse that's set out in the motion about the arrangements for the year ahead so yes i think it's in order i don't think it negates the original motion do we have a second for the amendment uh, council Petrosky. So you're formally doing that, or are you going to speak on it? I'll have to speak on motion. Okay. So first of all, we're asking for speaking on the amendment. So you could just formally second it, if you like. I would like to formally second Councillor Bissett's um, amendment, please. Thank you. Right. Okay. So um, are there any speakers on this amendment? Councillor Alcott. Mr. Mayor, thank you. I, I can't actually quite believe this. Um, that, that let's take out the council now, proceed to make the requisite member appointments in accordance with these new arrangements. People have elected these councillors in good faith. We need to start our work now and start serving the residents to, to take that out. I just, I'm sorry, it's just another example of, of green political policy having no idea. Thank you. I think I think it's important to there might be some misunderstanding here we're still going to be appointing to all the other committees it is only this subcommittee that we will be suspending for this period of time Mr Mayor forgive me I yeah I, I thought it was all oh, and I, okay yeah, no thank you apologies <laughs> Could you ask the question fine are there any other, other speakers on the amendment Councillor Denham um this has come um as a great surprise um we did have discussions, I did, uh, be between the elections and between this evening, I thought I'd spoken to a number of colleagues across the chamber, across all parties. This income management is a subcommittee. By definition, it is answerable to a superior committee, policy and resources. Um, I hope that we are all very mindful of the enormous budgetary pressures um, within the council and officer time spent in servicing multiple committees is one of those costs and expenses. National legislation has changed what district councils can do, how we can use our money, what we can invest in. So our ability to generate income is severely limited. Hence the previous constitutional change to rename this committee. If people are aspiring to be joint leaders, I would have thought one of the um, issues of that is actually not springing surprises on other people. Um, um, yes. I'm, I'm disappointed. I um, am not in support of this amendment. It's a delaying tactic. It's holding up a decision on something that could be decided 
we could demonstrate leadership in actually moving forwards with a small efficiency saving. Okay, I've got uh, Councillor Jabba Riaz and then Councillor uh, Adrian Gregson. Jabba first. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just speaking, I mean, it certainly has come as a surprise to me also in, in terms of that. I think I thought we were clear with uh, our, our discussions with other party leaders in terms of the progress. And actually, uh, th this actual committee, who I was the chair of, it is like, you know, Turkey's voting for Christmas, or I'm the Turkey working for Christmas as the chair as the chair of this committee, knowing that full well over the last year, the dwindling amount of items that have come before us and in terms of our remit has completely changed in, in terms of that. And being a subcommittee of a, of a main committee, we can easily handle the business within the, within the main policy contract. I see no detriment to the council of this move at all, except a, as a budgetary saving under tough financial circumstances and it's the most sensible logical solution and it's completely baffles me why we've completely do that the the functions of this committee in terms of income uh, m uh, management or generation can easily be dealt with uh, uh, the policy and resources committee so i will be working against it thank you thank you uh, i've now got uh, councillor gregson just press the button just press the button Thanks, uh, Mayor. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I agree with the comments uh, made uh, by my colleagues in terms of income management, um, but I'm, I'm slightly more ambivalent because I would be confident that a review would come to the same conclusion, uh, but it's just more time and effort to get there. Um, but uh, what I'm more concerned about is the, the, the rest of the motion. Uh, the rest of the amendment um uh, which actually does uh, negate whole of the amendment which the first amendment which was put forward so i'm surprised by the monitoring officer's decision to allow it i think i think there are only two people in the room who have experience of being the leader of this council or indeed another council um and um uh, i i don't believe that the other leader uh, in this room who has that experience of city and other council level would accept a situation where they were to be a co-leader um, and uh, and I think that what one of the main reasons for that is the way in which we deal with everybody else around the county and outside it's because it's very important that we recognize that this district council is a very small cog in a huge machine of bureaucracy and government and governance across the country and in order to be able to deal with those other bodies and partners and stakeholders and everybody else who's concerned about what happens in the city, whether they be private sector or public sector, or NHS or whoever, they want somebody to go to. They want a point of contract. They want somebody who can speak for the council and they need to know what's going on. And frankly, the, uh, the invention of a, a co-leader does not carry that weight or, or significance. And if you want to downgrade the city further, and our speaker spoke um, earlier on with some eloquence about his concerns about the way in which the city is falling behind, if you want to promote the city effectively amongst people outside this building, then what you need to do is to have an, a leader who can do that and who demonstrates that with the council decisions behind her. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I now call on Councillor Stanley. Uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you. To talk about the amendment. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, the question about income, income management, uh, income generation, is something that is actually quite critical to this council. There is no question that, that PNR is, is the parent committee and will, uh, will this motion to become a reality would, would take that responsibility on. Uh, but we need to be having really high level focused conversations about how we generate income in this city. There are, despite what is being said around, around the room, there are a number of ways that we are currently generating income and potentially in the future could uh, generate income, despite what has been referred to about legislative changes. So on that basis, I'm, I'm disappointed by, by the motion because there are two critical elements of, of our governance tied up in the same motion there. Uh, 
the one about joint leadership and the one about the future of income governance. Uh, they shouldn't be conflated together. They need to be uh, debated and either accepted or not uh, on, on, as separate entities. But the truth of the matter is that uh, we, as, as a group, are completely committed to the idea that this council should be generating income. We simply cannot fall behind in that respect. And the best way to have that conversation is, is via a committee dedicated to that end. So on those on those grounds, we because everything is conflated together, we, we are opposing the motion in its entirety. Thank you. This is you talking about the amendment, yeah, James. Yeah. Okay. So are there any other speakers on the amendment? No. So in that case, we will move to the vote. And but to be very main vote, fine. But before we do vote, I think we need to be very clear about what we're voting for. We are voting for an amendment which um, means that we retain the joint leader role that suspends the role of the income generation uh, subcommittee until after the uh, by-election is happening in Nunnery Ward and a review is taking place. And at that point then, uh, then a decision will be made at a, at a, at a subsequent uh, council meeting. So that is what we're going to be voting on. We're going to have a named vote, and I'm going to ask uh, Claire to handle the vote for me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. When I call your name, could you indicate if you're voting for, against, or abstaining on the amendment? Councillor Agar. Yes. Councillor Ali. Yes. Councillor Alcott. Yes. Councillor Altaf. Councillor Amos. Yes. Councillor Bissett. <coughs> Councillor Cleary. Yes. Councillor Cockerham. Yes. Councillor Cookson. Yes. Councillor Cooper. Yes. Councillor Cross. Yes. Councillor Denham. Councillor Desara, yes. Councillor Ditter, yes. Councillor Geraghty, yes. Councillor Gregson, yes. Councillor Hodgson, yes. Councillor Jaeger, yes. Councillor Lamb, yes. Councillor Lawrenson, yes. Councillor Lawrence, Councillor Lewing. Yes. Councillor Murray. Yes. Councillor Norfolk. Yes. Councillor Pingree. Yes. Councillor Petrovsky. Yes. Councillor Riaz. Yes. Councillor Roberts. Yes. Councillor Round. Councillor Sadiq. Yes. Councillor Smith. Yes. Councillor Stanley. Yes. Councillor Stephen. Four. <coughs> Councillor Udall. Yes. Okay, so that amendment has now uh, lost. Um, so we now move back on to the substantive motion. Uh, are there any other further speakers before we move to the vote? No? Oh, yes, uh, I think um, uh, I think it was Andy Roberts first. Could get the post there. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Congratulations on taking your post. Um, I guess that Edward Herdman in 1621 would have been absolutely shocked if the member of a council addressed him while sitting. But um, uh, from Adrian says the technology means I must do so. But I'm conscious and now speaking to you, I'm speaking to the citizens of Worcester. So it's no disrespect that I, I sit while I speak. Um, congratulations also to the, 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 the deputy mayor. I'm sure will do a great job. Um, I'm, can I just say, I was, I, I've mentioned it to him, but I was, I was very grateful to Christian from the Worcester News for his piece 
the other day because I couldn't get my, my head around this lot. It's so many things complicated, but he did a very good summation. And of course, we have Francis Lancaster do a history which is helpful. I don't quite remember the history as given by Tom, if I may say, um, and, and where it's gone to. We, we indeed, we indeed move with them. Um, great hopes, I suppose, into a, a rainbow coalition. But if we've reached the end of that rainbow co coalition, I've reached the end of the rainbow. If I look down, I don't see a pot and gold. I'm afraid I see chaos and confusion, to be frank, uh, that um, we don't really understand it and think what, what we're, we're voting for. But um, I would say that I, in part, in, in quite a, to an extent, agree with uh, Councillor Denham about the need for strong leadership. The only I'd, the point I'd make is that strong leadership is great, but with it has got to come responsibility and accountability. Um, so that's the balance of, that's the balance how I think. But what trumps everything is the democratic principle, I believe. And that is, or however well informed they were, or not well informed they were, the electorate of Worcester made a decision, and um, I might not agree with them entirely, but they made their decision, and that's what I live with. Uh, and the votes have been counted, the winners have been declared. It's not for us now to give a result. It's outside our. Own. They've made the decision, uh, and so that's uh, that's where we are. Um, it's it's we, we've got a constitution. Uh, we were elected as a whole in that form, uh, and so that's how we must proceed. If if our ro our rainbow coalition is so shattered that we can't even get two people to uh, to agree, then I'm afraid we're going to have to live with it. Uh, but uh, I, I don't think it's it's. Although I, I, I agree, I, I reiterate, I agree with uh, Councillor Lynn Denham on the strong leadership, responsibility, etc. I don't think it's for us to tell the electorate, sorry, we've changed our minds, we've changed the rules after they've cast their votes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Councillor Petrosky. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I, I just want to um sort of offer a slightly different perspective perhaps slightly less exciting than lofty words describing what leadership means the reality is that the main role of the leader here in this council which is a small cog in the bigger machine is to go and represent this council at external meetings some external meetings like the county uh, leaders board the local enterprise partnership so Let's remind ourselves that despite all the hype and excitement uh, in terms of the powers of the, of the, the, the leadership and, and the, the, the whole hierarchy sort of myth, uh, the reality is that uh, all the decisions are reporting to this council and we vote on those uh, in, in order. Um, if, if, I, um, if I had to change something in the constitution, uh, it would be probably something to do with the with the fixture of this of this chamber rather, rather than um, um, tinkering with the with the constitution i would rather have us sitting around the in a circle uh in, instead of um, on on two opposite sides so uh we've had the discussion last year i think um what work goes on in the um in the committees um and, and, and the benefits of the community system is pretty clear, clear for everybody. Um, and, and I'm afraid there is, there's clearly no appetite for, for changes and, and, and pursuing some um, ambitions for sole leadership or whatever it is that, that motivates uh, some colleagues here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do we have any other speakers? No? Oh. Uh, presumably a right of reply or to sum up? Yes. That's right, isn't it? Yes, thank you. Um, thank you to all colleagues for your contributions. Um, actually, take that on board. And sorry, it's quite an anxious evening for me. It's quite tense. So, congratulations, Mr. Mayor, and apologies I didn't do that initially. And welcome to all the new faces in the chamber. It, 
this council is a very, very different council um, to the one that last met before May the 4th. And I am very mindful of that and how different it feels and the, um, the makeup of it and, and the views within it. Um, I think it is worth reminding ourselves that only a third of the council was up for election this time. So whilst we can count votes, those votes were not being counted across the entirety of the city. So we need to be careful about making wrong assumptions with that. Um, the fact of, of not wanting to go for co-leadership doesn't mean that we can't work together. Um, if the last year is anything to go by, it shows actually how much can be achieved in a committee system by all parties um, without having a formal agreement or co-leadership. We can still get on and I hope we can deliver for our city accountability and being able to speak out on behalf of the council um, is important um, and yeah not not to repeat what i said initially but thank you for everybody's thoughts thank you okay so um that uh, ends the discussion we will now move to the vote on the motion, on the motion in, in its entirety so all those in favour of the motion that has not been, that is, that is um, the, original the, the original motion, all those in favour of the original motion, please raise your hand. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And all those against? Okay. So that motion is lost. Uh, we continue with the existing um, constitution. Thank you. Um, so we will now uh, proceed with the rest of the, the rest of the agenda uh, for appointing of leaders and committee chairs and so on. So the next item then is for the. Um, bear with me. The appointment of, uh, the appointment of leaders. Yes. Joint leaders. Joint leaders. Uh, Mr. Fair, for clarity, then, is that both parts of that motion being lost? Yes. So we retain the income management committee as it is, then. A name should be put forward, then, right? Do you want to clarify? Oh, what we do that has to be no. <laughs> So a, a name needs to be put forward for income generation because we. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, if I may clarify, um, thank you. Yes, the consequence of um, the constitution remaining as is is that we, we are required to allocate seats in accordance with political balance. Our proposal, which we were discussing um, a minute ago, was to proceed to that item on this agenda and then invite a 10 minute recess and discuss with group leaders how they wish to approach the appointment of committees on, in relation to, because uh, it does impact on political balance, but we just need to look at how material that is. Yep, thank you. Right, so the next item on the agenda then is the, the deferred item from the annual council, and that is the appointment of joint leaders to the council. I'm gonna invite the, uh, the, the leader of the largest political group to perform a nomination. Yes, Mr. Mayor, can I formally propose Councillor Lynn Denham as leader? Would you like for me to speak now? Um, first of all, let's, is there a seconder? There is a second for me, second, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. So I'll ask you now to um, speak on, on Lynn's behalf. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can I formally propose Councillor Lynn Denham as leader of the council? Uh, Councillor Denham has a vast amount of leadership experience, both from a management perspective in her many years as a senior leader in the NHS and as a leader of her party, not to mention the vast amount of experience she has gained as a committee chair here uh, and up at County Hall, delivering time and time again for her constituents and the city. If elected, Mr Mayor, she will be the first female leader of this city council in its history and she will represent the council with tact, diplomacy, care and the necessary decision making needed in this turbulent and challenging time. She's not afraid of 
challenging power. We're having that awkward conversation, but always with the city's needs first and foremost. She takes her responsibility and ownership of her role and her portfolio and is the perfect candidate to take the council into a new era. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I now call on Councillor Northwick to second. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And can I pass on my congratulations to you and your Deputy Mayor as well? I did say to Councillor Councillor Denham when she asked me to second this motion, but I was going to, going to formally second, and she said, "Can't you say something nice about me?" <laughs> um, so I could say that she she is a, the perfect person for the role. Uh, she's like um, she's like a, a like Gorbachev in the Soviet Union. She's got a nice smile with steel teeth. <laughs> Uh, she will be able to promote and protect this city in the best ways and the best traditions of a strong leader, strong joint leader. Fantastic. And I, I take it there are no other nominations from the Labour group? True? Yes? Okay. So on that basis now, we will turn to the vote. Um, so all those in favour of Councillor Lynn Denham being joint leader of the Council, please raise your hand now. Okay, all those against? And are there any abstentions? Thank you, so that vote is carried and uh, well done and congratulations to Councillor Linda, joint leader, thank you. Right, so the next item then is the uh, second joint leader. Um, uh, are there any nominations from uh, the Green Group? Uh, Councillor Lawrenson. Thank you, Mayor Stephen. I'm going to enjoy saying that. Um, okay, before you speak, uh, is there a seconder as well? I'll be more than happy to second. Uh, Thank you. Okay, so turning back to Councillor Lawrenson, um, if you'd like to speak in favour of, uh, I guess, Marjorie Bissett. Thank you, Mayor Stephen. Uh, I'm very pleased to propose that Councillor Bissett becomes joint leader of this council. Um, as you may have noticed, I live in the real world. Yep. No, I, yeah, you know. um, uh, I believe in leadership uh, and I have in fact led uh, a course on leadership. But anyway, back to Councillor Bissett. Councillor Bissett is highly organised, talented, compassionate, and she is an inspirational leader who has lots of management experience. I thoroughly enjoyed working with her in St. Stephen Ward. I'm in awe of the way in which she has coordinated so many activists and responded to so many queries from residents. I admire her calmness under great pressure as demonstrated yet again during this meeting. Her work ethic is second to none and she works so hard because she cares so much about people and this planet. She is and will be an excellent ambassador for Worcester. Thank you. Thank you. And now I'll ask for the seconding, please. Councillor Petrovsky. Uh, thank, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, for, b before I say something about my colleague, Councillor Bissett, I'd like to con um, wholeheartedly congratulate Councillor Denham. I'll never forget uh, probably about 13, 14 years ago when she asked me to come here and talk about migration in, in Worcestershire. Um, I, I think that's, that's a sign of somebody who um, thinks about the society that is changing, is becoming more diverse, and is becoming um, and, and is a compassionate person as well, and a person who tries to understand. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful and very pleased uh, to see you in this, in this role, Lynn. Um, as far as um, Councillor Bissett is, is called, I'll, I'll, um, I think it, it, it would be quite repetitive to say what um, Neil just uh, offered and shared, but I'll um, in, in terms of the, the frightening sometimes efficiency of Marjorie, uh, one little anecdote. We went to a concert uh, um, in Birmingham some time ago and we were talking about music. Uh, I was learning about Marjorie. Marjorie knows a lot about music as, as, as much as other things. She did mention something about uh, Mensa uh, International uh, and um, she, she asked me whether I know what that is. Uh, it's, it's an international organization for people uh, with very high IQs. Um, 
and, and, and she did say, oh, and by the way, do you know that I'm a member? Uh, I'll never forget this. I, I wasn't surprised then, and I'm not surprised now. Uh, and I um, have a strong belief that Marjorie will do an excellent uh, job um, sharing this role uh, with Councillor Denham. Uh, and can I just say, as a, as a man as well, it would be a really, really edifying side to, to all the women inspiring to leadership as well, to see you both in that role. Thank you. Right. Okay, um, I take it there are no other nominations from the Green Group. So in that case, we'll move straight to the vote. Um, all those in favour? Okay, all those against? Can we do the vote again for the four? All those in favour? Okay, all those against? All those abstaining? Thank you. Right. So that motion is carried and uh, congratulate uh, Marjorie Bissett. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Right, okay. So at this point, we're gonna have a short recess. It'll be approximately 10 minutes. I'm gonna ask the uh, four group leaders to come forward to the table here. We'll have a short meeting to discuss what's gonna happen about the income management subcommittee. Thank you.
Thank you, thank you very much, everybody. Um, we're now on uh, agenda item six, which is the deferred item from the annual com council, which is the political balance of committees. So this isn't the appointment of the, the chairs of those committees or the people on those committees. It is the principle of the political balance of those committees. I'm going to turn to Sean now to explain the latest um, discussions and deliberations that have just happened. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just to confirm um, for clarity and for the minutes, the political balance um, proposal is as set out in Appendix 1 in your published papers, but it now includes the addition of the Income Management Subcommittee, which in accordance with our current and, and adopted constitution has a membership of five people and the political balance on that committee is um, the allocation is two for Labour, two for Greens, one for Conservative. And that is the basis upon which uh, the political balance for the um, Income Management Subcommittee has been allocated and that's been discussed and agreed with group leaders in the recess. So that completes the report in relation to political balance. So this now is just for um, for approval, do we, do we need someone to propose it and second it? Just, yeah. 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 Can I have someone who's prepared to formally propose it? Looking for a volunteer. Councillor. Yeah. No? Anyone would like to? This is about the political balance, just the principle of political balance. Yeah. Someone prepared to do that? Yeah. Councillor Bistop? And anyone prepared to second it? Yeah. Councillor Petrosky, thank you. Right, so I think we've, we've got to vote for it, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah. So all those in favour of the political balance that has been set out in Appendix 1. Oh, all those in favour, please raise your hand. Okay. Yep. All those against? All those abstaining? So that's carried. Thank you very much. Okay, so we now move on to uh, agenda item seven, which is the um, appointment of the members of the committees and the chairs and vice chairs of those committees. I'm going to go through each of the uh, committees in turn, and I'm going to turn to group leaders to put forward their nominations. Okay, so and hopefully we'll get all those nominations. There'll be hopefully no duplications or omissions, and then we can hopefully then just vote on them and block as a whole shebang. Okay, right. So the first one is policy and resources. Um, so, um, Councillor Denham, could you please put forward your names for that, that committee, please? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Lynn Denham for Vice Chair, Jabba Riaz, Adrian Gregson, Robin Norfolk. Thank you. Um, Councillor Bissett, can you put forward names for the Green Group, please? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, myself as Vice Chair, and Councillors Cochran, Lamb. Okay. Shall I start again? Uh, myself as Vice Chair, and Councillors. Uh, Cochrane, Round and Piotrowski as members. Thank you. Um, Councillor Stanley, can you please put forward your three members, please? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, myself as Chair, Councillors Roberts and Stephen Hodgson. Thank you. Uh, turning now to the Liberal Democrat group, uh, Councillor Alcock, can you put yep. your names, Councillor please? Councillor Sarah Murray and myself. Thank you. Okay, the next committee is the Communities Committee, and again, I'm going to turn to Councillor Denham. Can you please put forward your names, please? Um, Chair Jabba Riaz, Matt Lamb, Basharat Ali, Jill De Sera. Um, Councillor Bissett, nominations for Communities Committee. Uh, yes, uh, Neil Lawrenson as Vice Chair, and um, Councillors Piotrowski and Cooper. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, Councillor Stanley, your names, please, for um, Communities Committee. Uh, Councillors um, Peter, Alpha, and Amos. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Olcott, your names for this committee, please. Yeah, Councillor Cowan Lawrence. Thank you. Thank you. Next uh, committee is the Environment Committee. Um, Councillor Denham, could you please put your names forward? Thank you. Um, Zoe Cookson for Vice Chair. Richard Udall, Atif Sadiq and Sue Smith. Thank you. Councillor Bissett for the Environment Committee. Councillor Lewing as Chair and members, um, myself, Councillor Cooper and Councillor Cross. Thank you. Councillor Stanley, your names please for this committee. Thank you. Councillor Alcott, <laughs> names for this Environment Committee. Councillor Jesse Jagger. Thank you. Turning now to the Health and Wellbeing Committee, uh, Councillor Denham, your names please. Thank you. Uh, myself as Chair, Richard Udall, Atif Sadiq and Basharat Ali. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Bissett, your names please for health and wellbeing. Councillors Lawrenson, Stephen, Cochran and Pingree. Thank you. Councillor Stanley, please put your names forward please. Uh, Councillor Hodgson for Vice Chair and Councillor Ditter. Thank you. Councillor Orcott, your names please. Councillor Sarah Murray. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you. Uh, next committee is Place and Economic Development. Uh, Councillor Denham, can you please put your names forward? Thank you. Um, Chair Robin Norfolk, Adrian Gregson, Jill De Sarah, and Jabba Riaz. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Bissett, your names please for Place and Economic Development. Councillors Cooper, Round, and Lewing. Thank you. Councillor Stanley, your uh, Councillor Cleary for Vice Chair, myself and Councillor Geraghty. And Councillor Alcott, names please. Councillor Jesse Jagger. Thank you. We now turn to the Personnel and General Purposes Subcommittee. Uh, Councillor Denham, your names please. Um, sorry. Moving between bits of paper. Um, Lynn Denham, Jabba Riaz, Zoe Cookson. Thank you. Um, Councillor Bissett, your name, please. Okay. Personal, yep. Yeah. Um, Steve Cochran as chair. Thank you. Councillor Stanley, your two names, please. Uh, myself and Councillor Geraghty. Thank you. Councillor Orcott. Councillor Sarah Murray. Thank you. To nominate chair. Oh, yes. Oh. Well, yeah, Councillor Stanley, you'll be vice chair, I understand. Thank you. Good. Right, moving on. The next one then is um, planning committee. Uh, do you want to, shall we do a policy committee? Should oh, we yes. Do, should we do income? Oh, sorry, yes. Yes, yeah, you're right. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So we've got income generation, mm -hmm. income management subcommittee. Uh, Councillor Denham, your two names, please. Um, Jabba Riaz for Vice Chair and Adrian Gregson. Yes. Uh, Councillor Bissett. Um, Councillors Round and Piotrowski. Thank you. Councillor Stanley. Thank you. And that concludes that. Uh, that subcommittee. We we'll now move on to the regulatory committees, and the first one we'll do is planning committee. Uh, Councillor Denham, can you please put your four names forward? Uh, Vice Chair Pat Agar, and other members Richard Udall, Jill De Sera, Sue Smith. <laughs> Councillor Bissop, your three names, please. Councillor Lewing as chair and members um, Councillor Cross and Councillor Round. Thank you. Councillors Amos, Ditter and Cleary. Yeah, myself. Thank you.
Uh, regulator Committee, Licensing and Environmental Health. Uh, Councillor Denham, your na four names, please. Uh, Chair Richard Udall, Robin Norfolk, Pat Agar and Sue Smith. Thank you. Councillor Bissett, your three names, please. Um, Councillor Stephen Cross and Pingree. Thank you. Councillor Stanley, your two names, please. Uh, Councillors Hodgson and myself. Thank you. And Councillor Alcott, your two names, please. Yep. Councillor Cameron Lawrence and myself as Vice Chair. Thank you. So we're now moving on to Audit and Governance. Um, Councillor Denham, can you give me your two names, please? Uh, Zoe Cookson and Matt Lamb. Thank you. Councillor Bissett, can you give me your two names, please? Councillor Piotrowski as Vice Chair and uh, Councillor Pingree. Thank you. Councillor Stanley, uh, your two names, please. Councillors Amos as Chair and Cleary. Thank you. And Councillor Orcott, your name, please. Yep, Councillor Jesse Jagger. Thank you. Okay, the last committee then is standards. Um, Councillor Denham, your two names, please. Sorry, <laughs> um, Vice Chair Jill De Sera and Matt Lamb. Thank you. Councillor Bissett, your two names. Councillor uh, Lawrence and myself. Thank you. Councillor Stanley, your two names, please. Councillors Roberts and Altaf. Thank you. And Councillor Alcott. Yeah, Ca name. Councillor Karen Lawrence is chair. Thank, Thank you. you. Right. Okay. Um, so I think do we do we have the vote on that first? Yeah. We do have a bodies. And... We do have a bodies first. Yeah. Fine. Okay. Okay, so the other bodies we have are Joint Museums Committee that has a membership of two. Um, so can we have names put forward for that? Councillor Denham. Um, I'd like to propose Pat Agar. Please. Thank you. Are there any other people who would like to, group of leaders who would like to put a name forward for this uh, outside body? No, in that case, that will, will remain vacant. Thank you. The next one then is Worcestershire Regulatory Services Board. Uh, we're allowed to have uh, two members on that. And the, the, I think there are two names being put forward by the Labour Group. Um, I was just going to put one name forward in, in light of the... Is that allowed to have two if they want to? Numbers or? within the council overall. Is that allowed? Okay, yes. If, if there was two available, would the, would the TPU would like to go forward for that or not? Well, I presume, given the balance of power, that maybe yeah. other parties might wish names. to, uh, okay. to so, send someone. Okay, so Councillor Bissett, do we have a, a name from the Green Group? This is for Worcestershire Regulatory Board. No. Oh, yes, myself. Okay, okay, fine. Fine, okay. Did you get the Excuse me, are we making up the sort of balance of power on the hoof? They're not, they're not political balance. Not. Okay, apologies for that, but I, there may possibly be others. Yeah, okay. Um, express an Councillor interest? Stanley and Councillor Ocott, would you like to put anyone forward for this? Okay, Councillor Ocott, would you like to put... Sorry, yeah, could you repeat that again? Sorry, okay. Now just... remember, this is a, this is an outside body. We're allowed two members, and so far we've got three people put themselves forward at least so far. Would you like to put someone forward from the Lib Dems as well? I would myself, please. Okay. Right. In that case, we're going to have to have a vote for that one. No. Okay. Your name then, please. Sorry. Uh, Councillor Riaz. Thank you. Okay. We have four names for two positions. Um, I need some support here. How are we going to resolve so you, that? You, take, you would take a vote on those in the Indeed. order of the largest groups would be the convention. So you vote on the Labour name, then the Green name. Okay. And then the Green and then the... Fine. Okay. Not, uh, okay. Not had a fight. For no. <laughs> no one normally <laughs> fights for these outside bodies, but there we go. Right. Okay. Are, are we sure that everyone wants those names put forward? Everyone wants to do that? Okay. Yeah. We will have a vote. Yeah, fine. Okay, <laughs> right. <laughs> right, okay. So we will first of all have a vote on, um, on Councillor Gemma Riaz 
All those in favour of Jebba Riyaz. Sorry. Excuse me, Chair. Could we actually be clear about the four names that are being put forward before we decide who we're going to okay. vote yeah. for? Because presumably the aim is to vote for two out of the four. So it would be helpful to know whom the four is so we can choose our favourite two. <laughs> okay, good, good idea. Thank you. So the four names we have are Councillor Jebba Riyaz, Councillor Marjorie Bissett, Councillor Ditter, and Councillor Alcott. Okay, four names. Right, I'm going to, so we, we need to select two from there. I'm going to turn to the largest group first, and we're going to be voting on Councillor Jabba Riaz first. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so all those in favour of Councillor Jabba Riaz having one of these positions, please put your hand up. Okay, all those against, all those abstaining. Okay, that is carried, so that's the first position filled. The next largest group is... No, no, you don't know yet, because we haven't done the other vote. You have to okay. count up the votes. <laughs> right. oh, okay, oh, okay, it's so the one with the highest number of votes. Okay, I got it. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> right. Okay, fine. Okay. Fine. Okay. You can vote for as many as you want. Vote more than two. Okay. Okay, you're gonna you can only vote twice. Yeah. Oh, it's two seats. Yeah. Yeah. You, so you get two votes. So you, yeah, yeah. some of you already yeah. used one of your votes. You're gonna go people. to the next one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Two right. Candidates. I'm very sorry that I've never done this before. <laughs> so, right. None of us have. No. <laughs> we don't normally fight over these <laughs> outside bodies. So like, right. Okay. So um so Okay, so there's 20 votes for Jabba. Okay, right. So the next one we're going to do is Councillor Bissett. All those in favour of Councillor Bissett, please raise your hand. Vote for yourself if you want to. Ted. Right. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. We're now turning to um, the position for Councillor Ditter. All those in favour of Councillor Ditter, remember that you can't vote more than once, uh, more than twice, twice. sorry. <laughs> so, so, so all those in favour of so Councillor Ditter. Give me eight, is it? Seven. 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 Okay. Okay. All right. So the next person then is Councillor Orcott. Uh, You can vote twice, you've got two votes. You can only vote, vote twice. No. <laughs> okay. Fine. Okay. I think there's going to be a bit of trust going on here. So, Councillor Alcott, we're going to now vote on Councillor Alcott. All those in favour of Councillor Alcott? Okay, so yes, Riaz. so it's Riaz. Councillor Riaz and, and Councillor Alcott. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> right, okay, the next one we're doing, oh, sorry, Councillor Denham. Um, I've, I've got an offer to fill the second place on Joint Museums Committee. If, if I, I didn't quite realise how we were going to work this because it's never quite worked that way before, um, but Councillor Gregson would be happy to take up that place. This is on the joint consultative no, 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 no. joint museums joint committee. Oh, I saw that. Ah, yes, yes. We have no other nominees, so yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm going to remind people now. There are two two positions on this. There are two nominations. I can, I'm trying to short circuit this a little bit. Are there any other nominations for? Joint Museums Committee, that's our body. Would anyone like to put forward a name for that committee? No, fine. <laughs> so in that case, uh, I think we need to still have a vote on that. Oh, no, it's done, because there's two nominations and okay. two places. Okay, fine. Yeah, right. done. Yeah, fine. That's done. So it's, yeah, so it's Councillor Agar and Councillor Gregson on that outside body. Well done, thank you. <laughs> Great. Um, okay, right, the last one is the Joint Consultative and Safety Committee. 
This is four councillors. Uh, <laughs> and I'm going to turn, first of all, to Councillor Denham uh, for your names, please. Am I correct that the leader of the council has to be a member of this committee? Yeah. Yes. No, which leader? Oh, one, of, one of the joint leaders. Oh, one of them. Okay. Uh, Lynn Denham and Zoe Cookson. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Bissett, uh, have you any names for this? Yes, I have uh, Councillor Piotrowski. Okay. Okay, Councillor Stanley, do you have any names to put forward? Okay. And um, <laughs> Councillor Alcott, would you like to put a name forward? Yeah, Councillor Jesse Jagger. Oh, God, we have to have a vote now. Oh, oh. no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right, so okay. Does, she want, does, she want, does Lynn want does both the seats? Do you want both those seats or not? Are you sure? Or was it just one for each group? If you, if you really want to, then we'll, we'll go for the vote. To save the pain of voting. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll just, well, I have to be there, don't I? Because I... Um, I am the leader, and I'm rather surprised that the other leader doesn't wish to be on that committee. All right, All right. so we'll cross Zoe out then. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sacrifice yourself. Sorry about that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. So we have four names for four positions, so we don't need to vote on that. Thank you. Phew. Right. I'm going to vote for all of that on block. One proposal, one seconder. Right. It's the last item of Fine. business. So this is the last item on the agenda. We're going to vote for all of those appointments of all of the committees on everything, all on block. We need one proposer and one seconder. Who is prepared to propose that, as, to put that forward? Thank you, Councillor Denham. Anyone prepared to second that? Councillor Cross, thank you. Right. So all those in favour of all the nominations we've just spent half an hour going through. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. All those against? No, unanimous. Thank you very much. And uh, that uh, concludes the end of this meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you for bearing with me. And uh, thank you. Um, I, I, will, I will just remind you that uh, we have uh, some refreshments in the Mayor's Park.